Happy New Year, everyone. Hope you're all having an amazing New Year <laughs> and a new day. Uh, we have here William Grosso back on to explain to us what the Fed is and some steady increase going on in uh, the rates. So this is going to be exciting to listen to, especially if you're in the market to purchase a house. And even if you're in the market to sell your house, why it's important uh, to act quickly. And uh, how are you, Will? You want to explain who you are a little bit? Will is amazing. He's a, he is um, a financial lender with Cardinal Financial Finance. And um, he is just absolutely a wonder to work with. And he's so helpful with all of his clients. And I'm so happy that I get to work with him. And he is here to give his time to explain a few questions that buyers may be having during this new year. Yes. Yeah. So I am. I'm a loan officer with Cardinal Financial. Um, I've been around real estate and finance for the last 15 years. And, you know, me, like everyone kind of in my field or around this area kind of tracks the markets. So there was a, a major announcement by the Fed chair right before the holidays. And it it does affect, uh, you know, buyers and people looking to refinance within the next year. Um, so I thought it would be a good topic to discuss, you know, because it also bleeds into the real estate market. So that's why I kind of mentioned it to Harjeet when we spoke and then we thought it might be worth discussing. Yeah. So, and sharing this information with the with the public and anybody who's not familiar with mortgages or rates this is such a good idea to or such a good watch so that we can learn what it is and i'm so happy that you're here to help us learn what is the fed so what is the fed for anyone you know who may not know what it is can you please explain to us what the fed is sure the Fed is, is short for the Federal Reserve. So that's the central bank in the United States. It's, um, you know, different countries have different structures, um, but that are, you know, and what, what happens is they set a benchmark rate. So the benchmark rate is, you know, is low. It's, it's been, been low now for the last couple of years. And, they have mechanisms to kind of assist the economy and to avoid economic, an economic crisis. So what has happened is this process is mainly making money available to banks, which also helps put money into the system. So it has a direct, it's not a direct, but it correlates with the mortgage rate. So with the Fed keeping interest rates low, Mortgage rates have been low now for a very extended stretch. And they made an announcement um, before the holidays that they will be increasing rates um, next year, meaning this year, 2022. Um, and it's estimated, they never really know because it's quarterly meetings, but they estimated there might be as many as three rate raises next year. So you only know quarter by quarter what's going to happen. And with this announcement, mortgage rates kind of spiked like a quarter percent in December. And then what's it's slowly adjusted a little bit lower since then. But it, it was enough to catch my eye. I'm sure everyone kind of in the field uh, noticed it as well. And we thought it was something to at least mention to realtors because, you know, right now you're in a situation where you go to purchase a house and you're at three and a half or three, three and a quarter percent. Your, your principal and interest could be $1,200 on the purchase. In the next year, you go to purchase at 4.5%, you know, it could be an extra two to $300 a month in your principal and interest, especially in high cost areas like Suffolk County, Nassau County, and, and the, the boroughs. So as a buyer, it's something to think about going forward What's the rate going to look like a year out? Is it time to make a move now while rates are still low? So, you know, as the year turned, like I said, it, they settled a little bit, but it appears, and this is just because no one really knows what's going to happen in the future, it appears that rates may increase throughout 2022. So just as a consideration, something buyers should think about. Um, and it also, you know, something Harjeet and I discussed was, 
you know, one of the major times and one of the major reasons to refinance in the way mortgages work in the current market is transitioning from an FHA mortgage over to a conventional mortgage. So everyone knows the FHA product, or at least my, who got an FHA product, you put three and a half percent down, but you also pay a monthly mortgage insurance. So someone in Suffolk County or someone with a, a higher cost house, your mortgage insurance can be between 200 and $400 a month, depending on your home and how you structured your FHA loan and how much money you put down. So if you can lower your rate and eliminate your mortgage insurance, it can be a solid monthly savings that really makes a refinance make sense. Um, and like I said, this window to do it with rates in the threes might really be closing. Like, I don't know. And I, like I said, I'm not here to predict that, but it's very possible rates could be above four or above four and a half percent by the end of 2022. You know, something could happen, the Fed could change its position or something, you know, in the future, and it could stay right where they are or go lower. But I'm just, you know, based on the me the minutes of the meeting and based on the new the reporting after, it does appear that's possible. And for those people that have kind of lingered in an FHA loan too long, it just means that maybe it's worth an application or speaking to a loan officer or someone and just trying to get a feel for the numbers. You know, okay, we're at three and a half percent right now. This is what the refinance looks like. You know, your projections of if it's a good financial move. A lot of people refinance since the pandemic, but I'm sure there's plenty, you know, myself included, that haven't been able to complete one. So, you know, hopefully it's it's coming up soon. And like I said, I personally feel that it, the window might close very, you know, in the next four to six months to have have the rates be really solid wow you know well that's uh something that i was you know as you were speaking and talking about how these rates are going up and we, of course we don't have we don't have a definitive prediction but we have something to work with and see what the future may look like so it's like if you can get a house at the percent rate that you can get right now, why wait to see if it's going to increase or not when you have the ability to purchase it right now? So one thing that, um, you know, I talk about with my clients as well is if you see a house that you're like, and you're ready, you're willing, you're able to purchase it right now, don't wait to put the offer in, put the offer in now, because I mean, the house next door may go on sale in four months, you may not be able to get that same house because just because of the interest changing the way that you were just explained it to to us so one thing is how um the so did inflation cause this increase the the federal reserve looks at the full economic picture so they're okay. the economists at heart even though like they're bankers but they're they look at all of that information and everyone that has shopped in the last three to four months realizes that after the pandemic or as the pandemic kind of, you know, I know everything's happened the last couple of months with Omicron, mm -hmm. but as the pandemic kind of, kind of petered out costs of things and supply chain issues have caused things to go, get more expensive. So part mm -hmm. of the Fed's reaction to inflation was to stop, basically purchasing bonds or purchasing mm -hmm. um, things from the market. So they did something called, they call the quantitative easing under Obama, but in reality what it is, is it's the Federal Reserve purchasing both business bonds as well as mortgage bonds. And they've done that consistently on a monthly basis, you know, for a long time. And they, the buzzword is tapering. So if you look under tapering, you know, in the news articles, but that just means they're going to purchase less, you know, less things from the market over the next year period. So that was a reaction to inflation because it's in essence, that's them putting less money into the market, but that also has an effect on mortgage rates because mm -hmm. one of the things they're buying is a bond is a pooled, you know, bond of mortgages. So, mm -hmm. You know, so with that, one of your buyers, meaning you have a huge buyer, that's the basically the federal bank buying less bonds. So that process is 
is different. It's different in 2022 than it has been in the past. And like, that's also one of the negative effects on rates, which may cause them to increase. You know, there is other, you know, but there are other purchasers of these bonds and it is kind of a safeguard because of how they've been underwriting mortgages. We're not in 2009. We don't underwrite mortgages based on a license and, you know, the real estate market. They, the process is different since Dodd-Frank. So those bonds may still have a buyer. So the fact that the Fed's not buying them may not really matter, but it is a huge purchaser of those bonds that helps keep rates lower. So it's one of those things that it may be, it may, it may affect rates in, in, a, in a negative way, meaning they would increase. It may not because there may be other buyers as everything else happens in the world, but it is something that was in the report and is something to consider when when looking at the outlook of what will happen to rates. Okay, so that is, you know, it's so important for us to actually pay attention to what is actually going on outside of our industries. Because in somehow, some way, it does affect all of us um, in any industry. And in the, mortgage, in the mortgage industry, in the real estate industry, we're seeing it happen. We're seeing more houses um, stay on the market longer than it was uh, in over the summer. I mean, we did have those houses that went over asking like crazy, but we're actually not seeing this anymore. Like it's, it's gone to back to somewhat normal. Right. And um, I also noticed, as you were talking about the inventories of other products, this is the same thing with houses. Like we have no inventory right now, which has increased, you know, the prices of homes as well. Yeah. And um, now that we have this, so I'm, the question I have now is, so since we have this low inventory with low interest rate, that gave this hot market that we've seen. Right. Now that we see the steadiness and steady increase in the rates, what do we expect to see with houses that are getting on the market now? I, To me, I'm not really sure, Harji, but my mm -hmm. feeling is I think everyone's going to realize that they're on a, they're, we're in a raising rate environment. At least yeah. that's the feel. If you ask, I guarantee if you, you ask three quarters, you know, three quarters of people would say we're in that environment. Yeah. But I think with low inventory, I think that's pushed a lot of buyers out of the market because mm -hmm. they don't want to get into a bidding war and they don't want to overpay. Nope. So I think, you know, you're at this critical point where you have to be able to, take that all into consideration and decide if now's the time to buy. Yeah. You know, because like I said, you're, if you're looking at four and a half percent a year out or even, you know, I mentioned to someone I paid, I, my first home, we paid five and a half percent for the first couple of years. You know, that mm -hmm. sounds crazy when you look at the mark, the, the rates today, but mm -hmm. you know, that was in 2008. That's where the rates were 2008, 2009. That's so, wild. Yeah. That's what I mean. That's not that long ago. That's not, mm -hmm. I'm not that old, but like, <laughs> <laughs> it, it was there that's where i mean my you know that's where rates were around that time so that's not out of the realm of possibilities and i think people just need to look at it like no one wants to overpay that's for sure yeah. but you also have to look at the cost of all right the money's at three and a half percent right now is it worth or you know three and a quarter is it worth me doing something now instead of waiting yeah. to see if there's a better market you know or where you know, there's actually inventory where you don't have to bid with four people, you know, to purchase mm -hmm. a home. So that that all has to go into the decision. I don't really know how it's going to play out, mm -hmm. but I think there's a window of these rates staying low, you know, but it's it's going to start to end soon is my guess. So, yeah, I see. That, it's, it's a hard decision for a buyer. You got to take all of that into consideration. And that's why it's important for them to have a realtor that understands that like you, you know, as part of the process, we work together. I pre-approve someone. We look at the numbers. Like that's what I mean. If you're tight on the pre-approval, and all of a sudden your mortgage payment's four hundred dollars more because of a rate shift and because you're bidding up, like 
that $400 is a mortgage cost. That means you really need to have a thousand dollars more in income. And like, that's, it's significant. Yeah. You know, and what that does is that blocks out a lot of buyers, you know, for their starter home or don't have this excess income or have student loans like someone like me. Like, it's just one of those things that it doesn't seem that big, like that big of a difference. But when you really look at numbers, a $400 swing on a payment or four or $500 swing on a payment, it really, it's almost, it's more than double that an income helps you get qualified. For yeah. That. You know, so if you're looking at it like, this is where we stand. It's just, it affects, it affects the numbers. It affects a lot of entry level buyers and mm. they just need to, like I said, and I also know it's a tough decision, but they need to take that into consideration. Yeah. Going forward. I, I totally agree. It's uh, something that will affect your ability to purchase a home, especially right. when um, you're at a budget where there is very little inventory of that budget. Yeah. Um, it may not affect somebody who actually, you know, who can be flexible, but especially if you're not a flexible, it's a, it's a decision that, uh, or it's a, it's something to put into consideration to make that decision and make it where your action is going to actually get you into purchasing a house. And again, as I've seen, especially here in Suffolk County, you pay almost more for rent than you have an actual mortgage payment. So if you can pay for your mortgage, the same amount that you're paying for your rent, now you have equity into your, in, in your own self by purchasing a house. And that's uh, that's something to consider as well and think about, do you really want to lose out on that or not? Right. And um, also it's difficult to find a good rental. You know, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Talk about problems with inventory. You know, they're only getting more expensive as well. You know, expensive so. and you know, I've noticed, especially with everything. I can speak for New York. What's going on here, and with uh, all the restrictions that have been happening with landlords, it's becoming more and more tough for landlords to actually look. Uh, you know, see somebody who's qualified that they would want to bring into their house because. I've seen horror stories um, with tenants that haven't been paying and can't get out. So that's a whole different topic for landlords. So if you can purchase a house and it's you have the pre-approval, like Will said, and he can help you with getting a pre-approval and take your numbers and look at your budget, and you see that this is a budget that if in four to five months there's a rate increase, I may lose out on purchasing a house, then we're here. Or if you're not, you know, if you're not close by and you're in Nassau or you're in Queens or upstate, you find a real estate professional who can help you narrow down your searches and get your house and move your, you know, move into a house. Um, so what is the effect? on the housing market with everything that you've been seeing and reading and learning about? I I think there's going to be two major things going into next year, and they've kind of dictated the last couple of years, which is I think the low inventory is going to make either people make a move to do something now, or it's going to make them continue to wait, which I, I do. I see a lot of early, you know first-time buyers and things like that just deciding that that kind of turns them off to the market right now. You know, I also think with the rising rates, I think that I don't know, if, I don't know what's going to happen to prices because I've seen predictions that prices will continue to rise because just because of the lack of inventory and because of the demand. But I do think that it affects your purchase. You know, if rates do tick up, it will affect yeah. the purchasing power of a lot of borrowers. So I know that because I look at numbers every day, but I don't know how broadly that will affect the market. I think it might. I think it will definitely help on deal to deal or hurt deal to deal, but I'm not really sure on the broad market what that will do. So I, I don't know. I see, I see the low inventory and I see the rising rates. I see like kind of a frenzy for a little bit this year, mm -hmm. you know, but we've kind of been at that level for, I mean, we kind of took a little bit of a break, but we've been at that, that level since the pandemic. Yep. Um, 
And then I guess when, you know, then we just have to see from there. You know, I think the time to refinance or if you're seriously considered buying, you know, your first home in the next three to six months, you're, pro you're probably in a good window to consider it, you know, because a year, a year and a half out, we might be at four and a half, five percent. Like I said, I'm, I don't have a crystal ball, but it does. It changes. It changes your numbers and it changes the affordability. So but you also, like I said, I also get the concern that you don't want to overpay either. Yeah. You know? So that's where you really got to look. You know, you look at your budget, you look how much you have to, you can rent the home for, you know, and you see what feels right. You know, all right, if I'm at this, if I'm at this mortgage rate on this house with these taxes, it's $2,800 a month. You know, if I were to go rent this house, it's 3000 a month and I don't own it. You yeah. know, like it's, it's one of those things that you got to just feel, You got, to me, you got to feel it out and that's the feel right. You know, and I know those, yeah. those are just numbers, but. It's amazing in life how sometimes that just that practice or, or that comparison and, and working through your budget will help you get there, you know, and that helps determine if it's the right time to move forward. That's so. awesome. That is awesome. Thank you, Will. Yeah. I, um, so you're saying we, you know, this is a good window, basically. We're in a we're in a window where we can be comfortable. Um, and then make a decision based on what you or what you're comfortable the the buyer is comfortable with. Thank you for that. Uh, thank you for your time today. I really appreciate uh, you taking the time out to explain to the viewers, explain to buyers, sellers, and especially you know any one uh, all of my clients that get the opportunity to talk to you and learn about purchasing their first home or purchasing their um, next home and building on with their equity. Thank you for always helping them out as well. Um, do you want to, uh, would you like to close out with something? Um, no, I'll just, I'll reiterate that, you know, I work with Harjeet and, mm -hmm. You know, I'm always here to look at scenarios for people. That's part of part of the service. It doesn't cost you any money. You know, I I have a great system behind me, a cardinal, you know, and we can give estimates and run things for people just to feel things out, you know, and that's kind of part of my business. And I love I love trying to work through those things for people and help give them the information they need to make a good decision. You know, I can't predict the future, like I mentioned a couple of times here. <laughs> but I can break down numbers and tell you what it looks like right now, you know, and what yeah. it'll look like in the next 45 day window if we lock the rate or move to something forward. So that's yeah. very possible. And that's kind of one of those things that we provide the service. And I, I just, I look forward to helping people with, with that data and with that information and, and helping them make a decision. So. And how can people reach out to you, Will? Um, they can always reach out to me by email. Um, it's just William.Grasso, G-R-A-U-S-S-O, at cardinalfinancial.com. William.G-R-A-U-S-S-O, at cardinalfinancial.com. <laughs> and, and my cell phone is uh, 631 seven nine three six four nine two and i'm on you know facebook and instagram and they're they're always welcome to reach out to me through any of those and you know i'm here to help and assist and if you're in contact with harjeet harjeet and i speak you know at least a couple times a week you know to try to help each other on deals or to work things through so you know we're always in contact and 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 work our business you know together awesome so. thank you will i really appreciate you I appreciate everything you do and everything, you know, all of the, the your experiences and what you've been learning and sharing it to everyone that you meet and servicing people this way. And I want to wish everyone a happy new year. And uh, 2022 is going to be great. And we're so happy that and grateful for your support and for you trusting us with your real estate needs and your financial needs as well. Have a wonderful day. Bye.
Take care.